The UK Minstrel is back. We got Ren on deck today. Listen, I don't want to waste too much time. We have a trilogy to finish, ladies and gentlemen. So this is part two. In part three, we got Screech's Tail, followed by Violet's Tail. Who knows what we are in store for, but you know what? Strap in. Ren, step back up to the plate, homie. Let's see what you've got. One. Scene setting. Scene setting. That's what it does. It just puts you in a certain mood, a certain atmosphere, and then gets you ready for when he wants to hit you with the lyricism and the storytelling. And this is going to be a weird antidote, but I remember being in uh, San Antonio and just sat outside on the river walk at a restaurant. And then you had uh, these three Spanish guitars that came over, like minstrels, and, and they played for you, right, on the acoustic guitar and, and a lot of picking, a lot of plucking, you know, slow, then fast, and then just serenading you with these songs and it just it, it always makes me think like of Ren like there's a little bit of I guess a Spanish influence to uh to some of his guitar playing like like you hear some of those melodies and some of those vibes if that makes sense but anyways let's get back to the man <laughs> wow well, you know what I love too is how we open up and it's kind of a misdirection right we don't show Ren right away like we're on a stairwell and then eventually we reveal him and the way that the lighting is you know it's not like this is all professionally set up it's nighttime yet again but there's like this dark band over his face and these like shadows just create this sense this broodiness this mood to the whole scene and even look how the lighting is now right like this stark red that's like shining on him it's not like a pure white light like again the, the shadows the choice of where we are the way that the camera is set up it all lends so well to the atmosphere that he's creating for you visually psychologically and then sonically when it hits our eardrums <laughs> Clocked out like Big Ben? We got clock bars. Clocked out like Big Ben. They screech, they boy. Where did he go? He melted into the black night just like snow. Wow. He's got such a poetic soul, man. Melted into the black night just like snow. It's like an author writing this, like a great writer, and you're, and you're reading one of those books. But in this case, it's through the form of music. Melted into the black night just like snow. Patrick, man, let me in. Please open the door. I think I fucked up, Patrick. Really fucked up, man. I'm not sure. I got crazy. Left this lady lying still on the floor. I think I killed her, Patrick. Come on, man. I can't knock no more. Wow. Screech cat. Love, again, the use of the guitar. The man doesn't have a drum kit. And he's making the sound of knocking on the door by knocking on the guitar. And then notice how the guitar changes, right? The tempo picks up. It gets so pacier, so much more tense. And even the camera work matches it. Right? Because it starts spinning around him a lot quicker. And we're just kind of there in a daze in the moment as he now switches to the first person perspective. Like he started storytelling, it was more third person setting the scene. And now we're diving into the perspective of Screech right after murdering Jenny. Think I killed a Patrick? Come on, man, I can't knock no more. But Screech kept on knocking till his knuckles became sore. But there's no sign of Patrick down at number 54. No refuge for our villain, for the bitter hands of fate. With something far more sinister in mind that does away. A 
What's he doing? Hey, babe, are you in? No, nothing really. I'm just a bit tired. Listen, can I swing around yours for a few moments? I just really miss you, babe. What the fuck do you mean you're busy? You fucking bitch, for fuck's sake! Siren sounds approaching like a banshee wow. in the night. I, he's so good with his visual performance and just changing characters and, and the personality that he exudes and gives you. You know, it's very unique the way he sings, and we talked about this, why I haven't spent as much time on, like, the cadences. And just, like, he's got such unique ways, of, like, being breathy in places, like, pushing it when he sings, slowing it down. Like, the way he enunciates words, the way he chops up bars and phrases. But I love right there. Just making the phone call. He's even... <sighs> like, he's just adding more to that. Just persona and, you know, characterization of being Screech. Like, breathing heavily. Like, he's just committed murder. He's obviously desperate to find a place to go high, to go lay low for a while. And then what's really cool here is the decision to step away. It's very, like, eerie. I feel like he's going to, like, turn into Smeagol all of a sudden, turn around and, like, take us for the precious. Like, he's got his back turned to us as he then carries on the tail and starts singing. For fuck's sakes! He, like, collects himself there, puts the phone away. I don't know about that cowboy uh, jacket, though, Ren. We're, we're going to have to talk about that situation as a uh, DC Commanders fan. Siren sounds approaching like a banshee in the night. The shrill cry of justice cutting like the sharpest knife. Sirens sound like a banshee in the night. Again, I, I love his choice of words. Banshee in the night. The shrill cry of justice cutting like the sharpest knife. But Screech was never one to run, not one to miss a fight. One hand upon his blade, he turned to face the blue lights. <gasps> Come on then, you fucking cunts, let's fucking have you then. I am Screech, I'm the boss, I'm the ender of men. You think wow. that uniform you're wearing means that you own these streets? These are my fucking streets, and they call me fucking Screech. Richard. Wow. How do you, do, like, can you imagine if he's in the middle of filming this and he's like three minutes in and then somebody just like walks into that alleyway and I'm just sad because you see like the windows and the lights, like what, what are people thinking? What time of night are we filming this? Because it's got to be super late. So we have less footfall, less of a chance of people interfering. And just imagine like hearing Ren's voice, like screaming outside of your window, like three o'clock in the morning like that. These are my fucking streets and they call me fucking Screech. Richard wow. was an officer who stood at six foot three. Work in London on the night shift, what he didn't think he'd see. Was a boy running at him like an animal possessed. With no time to hesitate, he fired four bullets at Screech's chest. Wow. Oh, that's clever. So clever again, using the guitar as a prop for more sound folio. In this case, using it for the gunshots, and then you kind of mute the string so it doesn't sound through, and then he just strums it. And then even the camera work, again, the camera work has done such a great job of matching what's happening as he tells the story and just creating the pacing and setting the mood. Like before this, it was kind of like very in your face for the officer like walking and you could see like this confrontation about to happen and the camera was reflecting that. And then every time he shoots, take a step back, shoot, take a step back and then eventually fall because you're hit because the cameraman is now representing Screech. See, was a boy running at him like an animal possessed. With no time to hesitate, he fired four bullets at Screech's chest. Powerful. Ah, story it ends right at the start. Young Screech and poor Jenny lying one street apart. Wow. An officer shaken. By the boy that he claimed Two bodies lay lifeless And it's such a shame It's such a shame And then it blurries out and fades out. Wow. Love that of having the camera 
be the perspective of being shot and then lying just from that abstract off-kilter angle while Ren finishes the story and then walks out of frame. The, the artistry and the storytelling of this man, I mean, this is, it, it really is, it's, it's like tales that we've kind of heard before, right? He, you can see the influences. You can see things that he's drawn from. But what I love is that he's just created this kind of world that captivates you. And it's so refreshing. And it still feels so original and, and so unique. And you can see why he's growing so quickly and why so many people are embracing him and his stories and his artistry. And these moments, again, that are one take, that are done live right? It's so different than going into a recording studio, laying out the song, dropping ad libs, dropping doubles, you know, chopping it up, chopping up beats and stuff like everything that he is doing. He is creating right there in the moment. It's improv music, yet it's creating these timeless pieces of art. What a concept, man. All right, let's get into Violet's Tale. One. It's not like we're on life support. Oh, wow. Can you imagine getting approval from a hospital to film it? Or a doctor's office? Even there, as he's playing the guitar, like, he's, he's getting into that mood, isn't he? Like, he's, like, rocking. Like a patient on the ward. Something's not right. This is my Pied Piper song right here. This man played this tune and started like marching and singing. I'd probably just follow him into the depths of hell. Oh, wow. That's a hell of a technique. really is it, it it is like a reinvention of the medieval bard for the modern day London City, far from pretty, 2005 A lady down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive Rhythmic beeps and bloodstains, she saw a lady weep, she's tired and frail Rhythmic, hang on Rhythmic beeps and bloodstains Rhythmic beeps the beeps of being on life support, bloodstained sheets, wow. She saw a lady weep, she's tired and frail. To set the scene, we must rewind the hands of time for Violet's tale. I love how he went, sort of instead of like progressing the chords, he like went backwards on the chords, reflecting like going backwards in time. Again, after he set the scene and set the stage for us. his looks man he is he's a little bit out there he's a little bit eccentric but it just it just adds even more to the performance violet was a silent girl grew up with violent starts her mother was a drinker and her father was a bastard every night he took a tie but never left the room I'll spare you with the things he did, I'm sure her mother knew. Ooh. Violet was a silent girl, she moved. Wow, what a moment just to like pause it, like say something that heavy right there. Like she's getting abused by her father. And again, he's got a great sense of like spacing, of letting that just marinate for a second. Then he just looks up and then takes you back in. I'm sure her mother knew. Pause. 
Violet was a silent girl, she moved out at 16 A semi-detached council flat, paid for by a welfare scheme Packing shelves at Tesco, stacking jars like pickled bricks She met a boy named Stevie and Working at Tesco? Packing jars like pickled bricks? Like pickled jars? Again, yeah the, the word choice. Go stacking jars like pickled bricks. She met a boy named Stevie and he was a little prick. Violet was a silent girl and Violet she fell fast. See Stevie was the wrong and the Isha knew how to charm her. Every night he took a tie but never left the room. History repeats itself. He paint her black and blue and dark. Oh, I love how he just like picks those bass here notes. So, devil comes to dance because the devil, like when it's bassy, it gets more menacing. You know, you think there's something sinister going on underneath. And just before that, he was having these beautiful higher harmonies and, and like things were a little bit, they're still eerie, but they were kind of lighter. And then he just drops down right there. And I love that kind of tonal shift. He repeats itself, he paint her black and blue and dark. Right. It's gonna rise. He's up here. And like the camera rises too to kind of reflect that pitch change. And then the camera starts to come back down as he gets lower. Things get grittier. Really clever camera work again. And in that hallway, like I didn't want to pause too much because I don't want to move it, ruin the atmosphere of it, but I love using that hallway and like the camera getting like really far away and then coming closer like great sense of like just spatial awareness of what's going on with things violet why are you always so quiet on her bedroom door and he's irate he's been drinking and smoking he's up late and he stands by her bedside she shakes but wow. her eyes stay shut you fucking slut i know you're up and he pinches her eyelids and folds them up violet Whoa. Why are you lying to me, Violet? She so stay silent. Think the, the the timing, right? Make sure that when we get to this part of the storytelling, we're by a door, so we can lean against the door and then use that as a prop to further the story and put us in the moment of him like knocking on the door, and then right there, like Violet asleep, and he tries to like wake her up and like pull her eyelids back. I love how the camera really gets right in Ren's face, like right there within that eye band and that eye level for that. And folds them up, Violet. And that's cool too with like the blur, like the camera's focused on the hands for a second, then when he goes up, like he comes forward and his eyes like really like almost pop out of his head. I know you're up. And he pinches her eyelids and folds them up, hmm. Violet. Why are you lying to me, Violet? She so stays silent, things turn violent. That's the wow. sound of his fists when they fall like a crashing pilot. Oh. Hit like hail. It's the sound of his fists when they fall like a crashing pilot. That, 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 da. That's a bar right there. Love the crashing pilot bar, but also love that little flow. And like, love the strum. Again, it's like a muted strum. Like, he doesn't want those strings coming through. That's the sound of his fists when they fall like a crashing pilot. And then he comes back to letting the string shine through again. Hit like hailstones, one to the collarbone, full force, full blown, blood's black bone, crack, knick, knack, paddy whack, one to the jaw and the tooth spat, detach, fist connects and disconnects a bone. A quick deflect to misdirect the blow. Wow. Fist connects to that, 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 do. That, 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 do. That flow switch right there. That's a polyrhythmic scheme. We talked about that. We've done that with our Harry Mack breakdowns. Detach, fist connects and disconnects a bone. Fist connects and disconnects her bone. So he's got a three syllable A, A, B with a bone, right? Fist connects to did to do to own the rhyme writing. Check this out. A quick deflect to misdirect the blow. But Quick deflect to misdirect the blow. So it goes that three syllable A, A to the B again. Really good flow, really good rhyme writing in the middle of the story. Nonetheless, his punches met her throat. Such a mess, he's left the bruised and broke. Mm. Violet, why? Carry that scheme all the way for four bars. I love it. His punches met her throat. Such a mess, he's left the bruised and broke. Violet, why are you always so silent, Violet? Why are you such a little liar, Violet? Do you think I want to do this, Violet? In character, she stays silent. Well, say something, Violet. Silence. Fucking say something. Wow, that's important. The theme throughout. Violet 
never really speaks. Like she's known for staying quiet while all this abuse is happening. Abuse from her father and now abuse from her partner, right? So she continues to stay quiet even in this situation. So I love how that theme is coming back around full circle here in the situation. Character, she stays silent. Well, say something, Violet. Silence. Fucking say something, Violet. Silence. Nice. Wait. Are those seagulls out here? Are we by the beach? Say something, Violet. Not one word. She stays quiet. Uh oh. Did it kill her? London City, far from pretty, two zero zero five. This is how we started the song. Baby down in. Yeah, what was that? City, far from pretty, two zero zero five. Lay. Brighton. I thought I heard seagulls. He's by the beach in this one. Deep down in Paddington is fighting just to stay alive. The doctor in a state of shock saw something here so very wrong. See, Violet, she was pregnant. Poor Violet, she was nine months gone. Turning to the doctor, Violet twist. broke her silence and she cried. If I'm to die right here tonight. All right, check this out. Violet, she was pregnant. Poor Violet, she was nine months gone. I love how we're following him. And again, like the camera's very shaky. It's it's very raw, right? As we're walking, he's progressing, like the strings match. Da, 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 da. But then when he makes that big reveal that she's pregnant, she's nine months pregnant, notice how he stops to deliver that line. Again, just a great sense of space, of the camera, just the the awareness and the acting ability and the delivery. And then the camera as well. Like it stops being as shaky. The camera like smooths out for a second so we can digest his line because it's almost like signaling visually. Hey, this is an important moment. Process this. Take it in. Turning to the doctor. And then he starts to progress again. Violet broke her silence and she cried. If I'm to die right here tonight, please let my baby stay alive. The doctor soon regained composure. Called the surgeon to come in. As Violet's world turned to black, the curtains closed. The lights went dim in London City far Again, I love how like we're outside now in the middle of the dreary hours it looks like of the night. Man is in a hospital gown. I, he's not even wearing shoes. <laughs> and he's just performing his heart out. Curtains closed, the lights went dim in London City far from pretty to zero zero five. A lady down in Paddington. Just lost the fight to stay alive A tragedy or a miracle It happened on these very streets Two twins aligned side by side A girl named Jenny And a boy named Screech Screech Ah, oh, no he did it No he did it Oh, oh, talk about a plot twist at the end. Wow. That's clever. I, I love the weaving of the different lives. Like, you know, you, you have the vignette as we start of Jenny and you focus on her and this awful situation that happens to her. And then you follow Screech and kind of karma comes around on Screech and he ends up dying. And, you know, that very same night that he took someone else's life, he loses his own life. And then you have Violet, who also loses her life. But, you know, she wanted to save those twins. And those twins were Jenny and Screech. And I guess they never actually knew that they were twins because obviously the mother died. I'm guessing dad wasn't around to claim them. I mean, it, this is the beauty of the, the storytelling. We're kind of filling in the blanks, right? And then ironically, in like a Oedipus Greek tragedy, this is a Greek tragedy. It, it really is, right? They end up, you know, Screech ends up killing his sister, his twin sister. Wow. Now I want to go back and listen to Jenny's tale to see if there were any indicators. Did he have any moments when like Jenny looked like Screech when he talked about her features or Screech's features? I'm not sure, but man, that was clever. That was a really clever twist. And when he said twins and then Jenny, he just knew. He just knew that it had to set up to be Sc That's great storytelling. You know, that, that had everything. It had a build up, it had scene setting, it had a twist, and then it just like left your eyes surprised at the end, like Macaulay Culkin revealing 
you know, in, with Bruce Willis and the Sixth Sense, and all of a sudden we realize that Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Next level ability from Ren. The visuals were on point. The guitar playing and his talent as a singer, as a rapper, the flows, the rhyme writing, the storytelling, the ability to captivate you with his delivery, with his unique cadences, with his mannerism, every, everything about this guy just screams artistry. And I'm here for it. Ren, you were Knoxville certified. Hope you guys liked today's video. Listen for here at the end. Obviously, enjoying the content. Do me a huge favor, people. Support the channel directly. Subscribe and notifications on. I can't tell you how much it means, how much it really does support. Also, if you want to support the content that I'm putting out, what I'm doing on here, consider joining the Patreon for further reactions, further content. It's a great family, a great community that we're trying to build. I love you guys. Stay safe. Stay positive. It's the one and only Knoxville. I'll catch you again.